Hello everyone, in this video we will see about how do we solve the square root of a given number without using the built-in function. And this we are going to solve using the Babylon method. Now this Babylon method is equivalent to newton raphson method of solving the equation x square minus s is equal to 0. Now whenever we compute the square root of a given number, there would be some error range in terms of decimal. Let us call that error range as e. Hence we say x plus e is approximately equal to x where e is much less than much less than x. Now if I substitute x as x plus e in this equation, it becomes x plus e whole square is equal to s. Or you can write it as x square plus 2xe plus e square is equal to s. Now we need what is the error range? It becomes e into 2x plus e is equal to s minus x square. Now this e is way less than x. That means 2x plus e is approximately equal to 2x. Hence I can write it as e into 2x is equal to s minus x square or e is equal to s minus x square divided by 2x. Now let us see what is x plus e. That's the next term. That's the next term. Hence we say x plus e is approximately equal to x plus. What is e? s minus x square divided by 2x. Now if I take 2x as the com uh, LCM, it becomes 2x square plus s minus x square. This is equal to s plus x square divided by 2x. Okay. Now, this is approximately equal to 1 by 2 into s by x plus x square by x is nothing but x. And this will be the next term by adding some error ranges. Right. Now, how do we compute this particular thing? Let us see by taking an example of how do we compute the square root of a, any positive number. Is that okay? Let us see how do we compute square root of 101 by using this method. Now, let s is equal to 101 because it is x square minus s is equal to 0. It means x equal to square root of s and we need square root of 101. Let s be 101. Now, what should be the initial value of x? Initial value of x you can assume randomly any positive number but if it is closer to s it is much better it is way faster but you can assume any positive value let me assume x0 is equal to 1 now we want to compute x1 what is x1 equal to we have just now written the formula it is x plus e is equal to 1 divided by 2 into what we have written over here we have said s by x plus s divided by x plus x. s divided by x plus x. Is that okay? Now using this, we are going to compute x1. How do we write it? We say 1 divided by 2 into x0. This is x is nothing but x0, the previous term. 1 plus s by x, 1, 0, 1 by 1. Is that okay? Now, if I open up the bracket, it is 1 divided by 2 into 102 is equal to 51. Now, at this point of time, you have to get the absolute difference between x0 and x1. Now, we say absolute difference of x0 minus x1 is equal to 50. Now, you need to have some error range to calculate it. Let the value of epsilon error range be say 10 to the power minus 4. We want to accurate up to 4 decimal places. Is 50 less than or equal to epsilon? No. Therefore, we should continue the procedure. Now here we compute x2. What is x2 is equal to? 1 by 2 into x1 plus s divided by x1. Now this is equal to 1 divided by 2. What is the value of x1? It is 51 plus 101 divided by 51. Now, if you solve this particular thing, I have already did it, you get 26.490. Now, 
Now again you get the absolute difference of x1 minus x2. Now what is x1 minus x2? 51 minus 26.490 is somewhere around 24 point something. Is it less than or equal to epsilon? No. Therefore you should continue with the next step. Hence we say x3 is equal to 1 divided by 2 x2 plus s divided by x2. Now is equal to 1 by 2 into what is x2? 26.490 26.490 plus 101 by 26.490. Now if I solve this particular thing, we will get 15.1513. Now again you get the difference between 15.1513 and the previous term is what? 26.490. Is it less than or equal to epsilon? No. Therefore we go to the next step. That means till it converges we are going to solve this. Now x4 is equal to 1 divided by 2, x3 plus s divided by x3. Now 1 divided by 2, what is x3? 15.1513 plus 101 divided by 15.1513. Now if I solve this, we get 10.9086. We get 10.9086. Now, again you check, is it less than or equal to epsilon? No, it's not converging. Therefore, we will solve the next step, x5 is equal to 1 divided by 2, x4 plus s divided by x4. Now, this is equal to 1 divided by 2. What is x4? 10.9086 plus 101 divided by 10.9086. Now, if we solve this particular thing, we will get 10.0836. We'll get 10.0836. Now again you subtract these two. Is it less than or equal to epsilon? No, it is not less than or equal to epsilon. Therefore, we will go to the next step. Now what is the next step over here? Next step we will say x6. And I write x6 is equal to 1 divided by 2. x5 plus s divided by x5. Now this is equal to 1 by 2. What is S5? It is 10.0836 plus 101 divided by 10.0836. Now if we solve this particular thing, we will get 10.04. We will get 10.04987. Now, is 10.04987 minus 10.0836, is it less than or equal to epsilon? No. Go to the next step. Now, we say x7 is equal to 1 divided by 2, x6 plus s by x6. Now this is equal to 1 by 2 into 10.04987 plus 101 divided by 10.04987. And if you solve this, again you get 10.04987. And you see that it will converge now. And whenever we it converts, we will stop and square root of 101 is 10.04987 approximately to 4 decimal places. This is a simple way how do we solve using the Babylon method. Now, when does it will converge? We have no idea. Therefore, we will use an infinite while loop and whenever it converges, we will stop the procedure and we will break. And one thing it is to note over here, this 15.1 513 comes from the previous value. This 15.1513 comes from the previous value. This 26.490 comes from the previous value. This 10.0906 comes from the previous value. Therefore, I need to compute the previous value and I need to compute the current value and we will take the absolute difference. If it is less than or equal to epsilon, we are going to stop the procedure and we will say whatever is the answer current, that is the answer. Let's see how do we write the code for it. Let us see how do we write code. Let n be the number for which we want to find the square root. We will read the value of n. Now suppose say the value of n is 101. Now we start from any arbitrary value and let the arbitrary value be 1 for our thing. And what do we say? We say the previous value is 1 and I need to compute the current value. Is that okay? Let's see what does it mean. We say double 
previous is equal to 1 and we say double current, we need to compute the value of current. Now, when does it converge? We have no idea. Therefore, we use an infinite value while 1. Now, how do you compute the current value? You say current is equal to 1 by 2 is 0.5 multiplied by x plus s by x. Now, what is x? The previous value. Now, previous value I have taken it in the previous. Therefore, we say previous plus s by x. S is nothing but n over here. n divided by previous. n divided by previous. Now, if you compute it, it becomes current is equal to 0 0.5 into previous is 1 plus 101 by 1 is 101. 102 plus 0 0.5 is nothing but 51. This becomes 51. Now, you need to get the absolute difference between current and previous. And how do we get it? We say if f absolute of current minus previous is less than or equal to we need some epsilon error range we need some epsilon error range let us say epsilon e p s i l o n let's say epsilon now what is epsilon let's define it we say hash define epsilon we say 0 0.0001 up to four decimal places we say 0 0.00 and if it is less than or equal to epsilon, we need to stop the procedure. Therefore, what do we say? We say break. And for the next iteration, previous should get the value of what? Current. Previous should get the value of current. And when you come out of it, the answer is stored in current. Hence, we say printf percentage lf slash n comma current. And this is the end of this. Now, let us see how does it work. Now, we say previous equal to 1. Let the value of n be 101. We have to compute current. Current is equal to 0.5 into previous plus 1 plus 101 divided by 1. 101 divided by 1 is nothing but 101 plus 1 is 102 into 0.5 is nothing but 52. It becomes 52. Now you check 52 minus 1 is 51 less than or equal to epsilon no. And you say previous equal to current. Therefore, previous becomes 52. Go back. Y1. Current is equal to 0.5 into. This is 0.5 into. Previous is 52 plus 101 divided by 52. Is that okay? And you get some answer approximately as 26.5. Approximately I am writing. Now again you check. 26.5 minus 52 less than or equal to epsilon. No. Again you say previous gets the value of current. Therefore, it becomes 26.5. Now, again you go Y1. Current is equal to uh, current uh, 0.5 into. This is 0.5 into 26.5 plus 101 divided by 26.5. And this answer approximately we got it as 15.15. Therefore, this current becomes 15.15. Approximate. Now, is it current minus previous is less than or equal to epsilon? No. Again, you say previous equal to current. Now, let us say previous equal to current. Therefore, previous will become 15.15. Y1. Current is 0.5 into 0.5 into previous is 15.15 plus 101 divided by 15.15. Now, if I solve this, this will be approximately 10.04 or 08 or something. I forgot it. 10.08. Now again if I take the absolute difference, it is not less than or equal epsilon. Therefore we say previous equal current. Now what is the value of current? 10.08. Now again you go while 1.5 into previous is 10.08 plus 101 divided by 10.08. Now, if we solve this, this is 10.04 approximately. Therefore, we write here 10.04. Now, is 10.08 minus 10.04 less than or equal to epsilon? No, it is not less than or equal to epsilon. You don't bracket. You say previous gets the value of current. It is 10.04. Why 1? 0.5 into. Now, this is 0.5 into. Previous is 10.04 plus 101 divided by 10.04 and this value is again equal to 10.04. Now, is previous minus, this is 0, less than or equal to 0 0.0001? Yes, 
you break from this loop and you print the value of current and it says 10.04 as the answer. This is how the Babylon method is used to find the square root of the given number. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment on the comment section about this video. Please subscribe to my channel and share the channel with your friends. Thank you. For the online paid courses of C programming, data structures using C and analysis and design of algorithms, you may contact at the given email ID and you may download the following app. The app link is being given in the description section. Thank you.